Welcome to the Bentley Systems Training Course to learn how to design isolated, continuous, and pile cap foundations in the STAD Foundation Advanced General Mode. Over the next series of videos, we will show you the complete workflow for assigning rigid foundation types to an overall foundation plan, including isolated footings, combined foundations, and pile cap foundations. We will also show you how to review your overall foundation plan for layout and schedules. In this video, we will show you the complete workflow for designing pile cap foundations in STAD Foundation Advanced. This process includes specifying the design parameters, selecting a pile layout, and then performing the design. The first step for designing pile cap foundations is to select the supports that should be designed as pile caps. According to our soil investigation for this particular job, we do have a weak soil strata below our southernmost supports. I'm going to go ahead and select these supports as candidates for pile cap design. Next, I'm going to go over to my main navigator, expand the job setup group, and then create a new job. I'm going to enter my job name, and I'm going to just call it pile cap. I'm going to select the job type and I'm going to change this also to pile cap. And then I'm going to select my design code, my units, and I'm going to assign this type of job to my selected supports. Next, I can select my code version and I'll go ahead and select the ACI 31811. Finally, I'm going to select all the loads and load combinations to be included in the pile cap design. And to select everything that was defined in the loads area, I can click on the second icon over from the left, which will grab all of my load cases and my load combinations, which includes service loads and ultimate loads. Finally, I'm going to go ahead and click on my Create Job button to create my pile cap job. After your pile cap job is created, you are now ready to specify the design parameters. So over in the main navigator, we will expand our pile cap job group and select design parameters. Here we will enter our strength of concrete, the unit weight of concrete, the yield strength of steel, and our minimum and maximum bar spacing. We can add a surcharge for the loading and our cover requirements. We can set up some optimization parameters such as your initial thickness and the depth of the pile in the pile cap. We'll go ahead and select 6 inches. We can enter a depth of soil above our footing. We'll enter that as 24 inches and a depth of our water table. We can also do the unit weight of soil and we can change any of these units at any time to fit our needs. And finally also a minimum and maximum bar sizes. Next we're going to specify our pile layout. Now we have two different options for specifying a pile layout. The first one is the predefined area, and this is used to specify a pile arrangement for a pile cap using a set of predefined pile layouts. Using the predefined layouts, the program can then automatically choose the best pile arrangement given the pile capacities. We can also use the parametric command, which is used to specify a pile arrangement for a pile cap by specifying a rectangular or circular pile arrangement. For this training, we're going to go ahead and use the predefined templates that are provided by STAT Foundation Advanced. We're going to start with the support we want to design first, and we have all the supports available in this job, and we'll start with support number 13 in the bottom left-hand corner. We are then going to enter our pile capacities, and hopefully you can get this information from your geotechnical engineering report. We are also going to enter a pile diameter and a pile spacing. 
along with the edge distance. Once you've entered all of your pile arrangement information, your pile size and your pile capacities, we're going to go ahead and click on the Calculate button to calculate a typical arrangement for this. And again, Stat Foundation Advance will limit the selection in this dialog that pops up to only layouts that satisfy your loading and your pile capacities. Here we're going to go ahead and select one of the pile arrangements. We'll go with the three pile arrangement and we'll select case one. And you could preview any of these arrangements over in the right hand side of this dialog. We're then going to go ahead and click OK. And now support number 13 is ready. Now if we don't love that arrangement we can also adjust some of the parameters down here more manually. We would then want to do this for each of the supports in our job. So we're going to move on to support number 14. All of the pile capacity information is the same, so all we have to do is go ahead and click the Calculate button. We can select our arrangement and then click OK. And we'll continue for the last two supports. After your design parameters are specified and your pile layouts were selected, you are now ready to perform the design for your pile cap foundations. Over in the main navigator, I'm now going to go ahead and click on the design command and I'm going to confirm this operation by clicking yes. After the design is completed, the output pane should have some output results, a quick summary table for you to review, along with your calculation sheet should appear on your screen. We'll go ahead and review this report in the output pane and we do have output results available. Next we're going to go ahead and scan our calculation sheet and make sure all of our design checks are currently passing. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and scan through each of the supports. We'll see a repeat of our input information along with other calculations for the self weight, your pile reactions, any reinforcement calculations, your pile cap thickness calculations, and your check for maximum bar sizes. If you have pedestals, you will always be able to review that information as well. Now as we scan through our results, we're seeing a little note here, which means that the critical depth of our pile cap foundation is greater than our effective depth, which actually indicates that this pile cap currently is not safe. And if I scrolled through the rest of the supports, I'd actually see some similar notes. So what I'm going to do is now we found a warning or an error through the calculations. And what we need to do is go back and modify some of our design parameters to achieve a safe design. And again, I would see this note other places and it is color coded for your convenience. Here it is again. So what I'm going to do is for this model, I'm going to go back to my design parameters and I'm going to review some of my input results. Now I'm seeing that my initial thickness was set at 12 inches and the depth into my footing um, that the pile cap or the pile is going is 6 inches. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try increasing this initial thickness and I probably need a thicker pile cap. So I'll go ahead and say instead of 12 inches, let's try 18 inches. I'm going to save this model and then I'm going to rerun the design. Now the design is complete. Let's go ahead and scan through and make sure that we have now satisfied our safety requirements. We have now achieved a safe design. Our effective depth is greater than or equal to our critical depth. So now we have satisfied that check. And as we scan the rest of the report, I'm not seeing any other design calculations that are currently yielding warnings or errors. So we can go ahead and proceed to the rest of our results.
Now what we'll do after your design is successful and all of your checks have passed, we can go over to our detail and schedule drawing and we can see that we can now review a detail of the pedestal and the pile cap foundation for each of our supports within this job. We can also save any of these CAD style drawings as a CAD file if we want to use them to assist us in creating our construction documents. For this particular project that we designed the foundation plan in STAD Foundation Advanced, we were required to design several different types of foundations based on maybe our structural geometry and also our geotechnical rep recommendations including eccentric footings, continuous footings, spread footings, and pile cap foundations. Now after the design is complete for each of these different types of foundations in STAD Foundation Advanced, you do have the ability to review your CAD drawings with all the other foundation systems in other jobs simultaneously. And we'll go ahead and show you how to do that to wrap up your last step in your workflow of designing an overall foundation plan in STAD Foundation Advanced. We have a couple different drawing types where you can review information from not just your current job but other jobs in your model as well, which can be very useful when you are designing an overall foundation plan in STAD Foundation Advanced. The first one is our scheduled drawing. I'm going to go ahead and click on our scheduled drawing tab and what we're going to notice is that we have foundation types from other jobs, not just our current job. So I can review all of our spread footings and continuous foundations in an overall schedule, which might be great information to use if I'm trying to generate my construction documents and get a bird's eye view of everything that was designed for this model. In addition, in this spread footing table, I will have the results from both my typical footings that I had done and also my separate job for my eccentric footings all together in one table. In addition to that, if I go ahead and select my GA drawing tab up at the top of the screen, I will have information or a foundation layout for all of the analyzed footings drawn to scale. And this might be a great place to go if you're trying to generate your foundation plan in CAD and also to make sure that you are not currently, any of your foundations aren't currently interfering with each other or with any of your site restrictions such as underground utilities or property lines. Now what we will notice on this general arrangement drawing is for our eccentric footings which were along this column line. We have our spread footing and also our continuous footing was designed eccentrically. The footings may need to be adjusted once you get this model into CAD. So if this particular column stayed on the column line and the footing is shifted to the left, you may have to make those changes a little bit more manually. But the rest of the information will be absolutely accurate and ready for your CAD. This completes our workflow for designing an overall foundation system consisting of spread footings, continuous foundations, and pile cap foundations in STAD Foundation Advanced. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.